you want to know who's currently really mad at themselves? Me, because I filmed half of a video and then my battery died on my camera and then I realized I was never filming to begin with. Screw me, right? That's fine. That's fine. Oh, everything's fine. But, that being said, this is going to be this video. I'm going to try to incorporate a lot more sit-down videos and um, try to be more in front of the camera a little bit more. Uh, I'm still going to do the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon episodes because um, I really enjoy making those. But I do want to incorporate some more sit-down videos here and there um, when I have the chance and I don't feel like um, the world's crashing on me even though this week apparently my world seems like it's crashing on me and I'm gonna film this anyways because I need a video for Tuesday. And cue intro if I had an intro but I don't have an intro. I'm gonna talk about something controver controversial for this video. The fitness industry. There's good sides, there's bad parts, and uh, I'm going to talk about all of it and probably go on a tangent about something else in between. Somewhere along the way, probably will go from one end to another and probably end up nowhere near the topic of fitness industry. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. The pros. So I think the one thing the fitness industry has been able to do in the last 15 to 20 years is bring communities together. I think 15 to 20 years ago, you would not see many women in the gym weightlifting, powerlifting, and Smith machines, power racks, nothing. And if they had dumbbells in their hand, it was like five pounds or less. Um, they wouldn't be on leg presses, they would be on nothing, they would just do bare minimum. Um, and not saying that that's bad or anything, but we've advanced since then. Now there's more women who are okay with weightlifting, they are trying weightlifting, they um, are experimenting with weightlifting, they are more okay with it, they feel more comfortable with it. Um, and I think that's the one thing the fitness industry has done is unite a group and made it so women feel better about weightlifting and doing all that kind of stuff and not too worried about what others think. Although we all know in the back of your brain you think about it but in reality no one's looking at you except for you. Anyways. But now to the bad parts. Oh boy, the bad parts. <laughs> now as much as I just said like the fitness industry has like brought people together and everything like that, it's also kind of torn people apart. And some people have decided to make things that shouldn't uh, quite exist. And, um, <clears throat> cough, cough. Uh, fat burner pills. I think those are stupid. And regardless if they work or not, they should be thrown out in the trash and not exist. Because I think that's stupid. Uh, the reason why I think it's stupid is because I feel like that is making the brain think, oh, if I take multiple of these, it's going to all go away. And I don't have to do anything. And, you know half the people probably don't aren't reading what the heck is in these. They are just popping it like it's candy. And that's where the problem is, is people try to take shortcuts. Shortcuts don't work. Shortcuts lead to problems. And that is kind of my problem here. Um, now, quick little backtrack. I am NASM certified. I am a kinesiology student. I have a sports nutrition cert from NASM as well, and I'm currently working on my exercise correction um, certification with NASM as well. More importantly, kinesiology background. I'm studying that. That is my major. Um, so that only kind of wraps all this together. It's like, oh yeah, she she knows. She she's trying. She's talking about something that I don't know. Maybe. Like, maybe people don't want to talk about it. Maybe some people want to talk about it. But that's fine. Anyways, I think the marketing with some of the products that are out there directed towards fitness people or those trying to lose weight or those trying to just be more active is uh, ridiculous. 100% ridiculous. Um, not only that, but a lot of these aren't FDA regulated. They just kind of go through and that's it. Which is also kind of a problem. Um, there are some places that do third-party testing, but you know, a lot of times you gotta be careful because you don't know what you're really ingesting. Um, you know, there's even been conversations before of like 
how much protein are we really taking in these protein powders because not regulated. Um, but anyways, that aside, um, back to the previous comment of the fat burner pills. Um, yeah, they're trash. They're garbage. I wish they didn't exist because I feel like that is a horrible way to try to market um, someone to, you know, be excited to work out because that just makes me want to be like, I don't want to work out. I just want to sit on my couch and do nothing. But that is, uh, that is my spiel on that. Now, there are good supplements out there. And there's supplements that I take, there's supplements I don't take, there's supplements that I don't feel are necessary particularly. Um, I take protein powder, that's basically the only supplement I take, other than like medication, but that's not supplements. So, that's where I'm at right now, at least in this current time frame of filming this video. Basically protein powder is my supplements that I take. I've tried pre-workout before, it's not my cup of tea, did not like it. I tried, I couldn't even finish the two containers I bought, they got thrown out. Actually, they went through a whole apartment move with me and I threw them out because they were rock solid. That is how much I did not like pre-workout. I don't know if it was the flavors that I bought, I don't know, but I didn't try it again because I was like, I'm too, um, mm -mm, bye. Anyways. Creatine, I've dabbled with probably mostly in high school, and creatine's not a bad thing. Creatine, I think if you're going to take supplements, it's going to be creatine and protein powder. I think those are the main two that I see get used the most often. Um, there's certain other proteins that I'm, or certain other supplements that I'm like, cool, you want to take it? That's fine. But there's also some stuff that you have to be careful because if you take so much, you're just pissing it out at the end of the day. So it's like, is it really something you need to take? So, basically, the blanket answer on this one is watch what you're taking and also watch what you're eating because sometimes you're gonna overconsume on a nutrient and then you're like pissing out the rest. Um, because, like, for example, like protein, your body's gonna only absorb so much of it. The rest of it, your body's just gonna be like, yummy, thanks. All right, bye. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I mean, cause protein can be good. Chicken, steak, you know, whatever you do, whatever you like, um, your veggie patty, I don't know, but there's, it gets to the point where your body's not gonna absorb anything else from it, but your body's gonna like it. Your mouth your taste buds are gonna like it. So, I mean, as long as it's not endangering your health, I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I said, I was going to go on multiple tangents here and uh, I have um, another one that I have a big, really annoying, massive. It just peeves me. It annoys me. It is people saying they can spot reduce fat or people who waste, wear those little waist trainers at the gym. That annoys me a lot. That's a, that's a, that is a peeve. <laughs> that is a pet peeve of mine. Because I don't think you need to be wearing that at the gym. I don't think you even need to be buying it in the first place. I don't think that there's a point to it. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me on this whole video if I'm wrong. This is just what my brain's imploding on right now. But I don't see the purpose for it. Um, you're you're going to work out. Go work out. Just get some clothes on and walk out of your door and work out. If that's a walk, cool. If that's you jogging, cool. If it's taking your dog out, cool. If it's actually going to the gym, cool. Just don't wear it anywhere. Don't even, don't even buy it. Don't buy it unless you've been told, hey, like medically or like, I don't know, something along those lines, like that you have to have it. Just don't. And I'm pretty sure if you medically need it, it's going to be a back brace instead and not one of those waist shapers. All right, the spot reducing on the fat. I've heard this for the longest time and I used to work in a different department at my job and I would sell like treadmills and exercise equipment and all this other stuff along with other stuff. And the moment that people, I tell uh, my customer like, hey, yeah, I'm like NASM certified. So like I, I kind of 
know which treadmill you should be going for or like hey this is why this tread's gonna be a lot better on your joints or hey um do you have knee pain i'm gonna recommend you not you not buy this but buy that um for x y and z and then i would get some tons of people who were like so what machine can like spot reduce fat and then i'd have to look at them and be like ma'am that, that that's not a thing and then they'd go will the bike do that or should i get an elliptical and i'd have to look back at them again and be like ma'am that's not a thing what about a rower i've heard rowers are really good for your whole body or something once again ma'am that does not exist your body is going to lose body fat percentage all over you can strengthen your core if you want go ahead go ahead but you're not gonna you're, you're not gonna spot reduce anything that's not a thing i i mean if you want to do surgery i mean i'm pretty sure that's the only re way you're gonna spot reduce that but like why would you go down that route to begin with that sounds like a very painful route and um you're bypassing all the benefits from exercise too and you're probably not even going to be able to get out of bed for a, a long long time if you're trying to spot reduce your core <sighs> anyways i think that's where my main tangents for today's video of the like fitness and um because I, I don't know how long these videos should be that I'm sitting down on and how long people actually want to watch me babble. So it's like 11 minutes long, so I'm going to shut up now. I probably could go on longer, but I don't want to make everyone suffer more than they have to. So. Bye, guys.